NFL trade deadline is just five days away and the Eagles season is already nearing a crossroads. Sitting at 3-4 and four after back-to-back -back blowouts, the Birds have to decide whether they still believe this season is worth fighting for from a front office perspective or if it's better to begin work on a longer term plan. It's a tricky spot to be in, we all remember the Golden Tate trade, but here's a look at a few of the options facing the Eagles over the next few days. We're going to look at potential targets, potential trade partners and maybe some assets that the Eagles can give up in return. Strap yourselves in for your ultimate guide to the NFL trade deadline from an Eagles fan perspective. But before we get started though guys make sure you leave a like and hit that subscribe button. If this video hits 250 likes we will give away a Philly Sports Network hoodie and on that note don't forget you can get daily coverage from myself and all of our writers at phillysportsnetwork.com. We're going to start things off by identifying the team's biggest needs and doing so from Howie Roseman's perspective which believe me is no easy one to be in. He's come under a lot of criticism recently for maybe not pulling the trigger on certain trades and this even day back to the Jadeveon Clowney incident but I think when you look at it from his personal view right now it's easy to see why he's not so eager to pull the trigger on certain moves but here are the four biggest team needs ahead of the next five days. First up is defensive tackle and this may be the most heartbreaking of all considering just how hard Roseman worked to replenish the unit after Fletcher Cox had to carry pretty much the entire position throughout a career season in 2018. Timmy Jernigan and Malik Jackson, who both were signed by the Eagles this offseason, are now injured. We don't know when Jernigan's coming back and Jackson is out for the season. To make matters worse, Hassan Ridgway, who is arguably the team's best acquisition of the offseason, is also now on injured reserve, leaving just Fletcher Cox and two reserve defensive tackles who were just signed to the practice squad this week, which means that even though they may see playing time, there is no one to shoulder that burden. The pass rush has already come under some criticism this season. Some of it warranted, some of it not, and it's dependent on other factors. But one thing remains, you can't expect Fletcher Cox to carry the entire pass rush home this season. They need to get some extra bulk inside. Whether it's a free agent like Benny Logan or a potential trade partner, this has to be an area of priority for the Eagles. Second on my list is linebacker. And cutting Zach Brown may have sounded good in theory, but he did rank third in team tackles at the time. And that unit was without Nigel Bradham in the blowout loss to Dallas. And it showed. He hasn't practiced this week either, and the depleted linebacker corps struggled massively against the Cowboys, and that trend could be set to continue if help doesn't arrive soon. Third on the list is cornerback, but I don't really like putting it there because it all comes down to perception. The Eagles pass defense is a total mess, that we can all agree on, but whether you put it down to talent or scheme is a very different conversation and one with a variety of results. For me, I think it's a little from column A and a little from column B, but the end result's the same. Can an extra player really take that strain off of Jim Schwartz? Only time will tell, and the only way we're going to find out is if the Eagles do pull the trigger. And finally, wide receiver. Missing Deshaun Jackson is one thing, but Matt Collins has been disappointing in just about every sense. Rookie JJ Ortega Whiteside barely sees the field, and Nelson Aguilar, let's just not go there for the sake of our sanity. Help may be needed if Jackson, who has been labelled close for a few weeks now, doesn't return soon. The Eagles can't rely on Matt Collins, they can't rely on Nelson Aguilar, and they can't rely on a player they're not even allowing to see the field. So, regardless of what the reason for this problem is, there has to be a solution. And right now, that solution is outside help. But, depending on the type of help they want, they're going to have to dig deep into their pockets. And I'm not just talking draft picks, because not every team can be that easily swayed. They're going to need some sweetness, at the very least. So, I've found some players that I think could well be on the trade block, so to speak, if the Eagles do open negotiations. The first of which, believe it or not, is Nelson Aguilar. Carrying a cap hit of 9.3 million really doesn't help him in this instance, but he could be used in a sweetener deal in exchange for a player who carries a similar cap hit. The USC product has been sporadic this year, which has unfortunately become what's expected in terms of what we see on the field. A change of scenery may do him good, and the Eagles may even push Arthega Whiteside into slot duties in that big slot role like they tried to explore during the pre-draft interviews to get him some more exposure. The only way Aguilar gets dealt is a team who needs a wide receiver that may have a player who carries that hit though. So we're talking someone like a Geno Atkins who would cost you around $11 million. That's the sort of thing we're looking at, but much more on that situation later. Second on the list, and it breaks my heart to say this, but Razul Douglas. He's been the Eagles' best corner this season in my opinion, but that's what makes him valuable. 
Doug Peterson stated that Mills and Darby would resume starting roles when healthy, and while I disagree with that decision, if I'm Douglas, I'm absolutely fuming. That's the third year in a row that this would have happened, and it's arguably been his best yet, and I would happily seek an opportunity to start for a team where I feel valued for one, and won't be chained down by schematic deficiencies for two. So the instance I see this happening is if the Eagles trade for a cornerback, it gives them back leverage. A team may not want to give up a corner due to a lack of depth at the position already, so if they give them a replacement who may not be as talented for a team that isn't seeking to win right now, that's the kind of deal I can see Douglas being dealt, but he definitely has trade value, and it is likely that he could be moved. Third is Halapulavati Vitae. The future of the tackle position rests on the shoulders of Andre Dillon. Vitae is serviceable, don't get me wrong, but fellow draftmate Isaac Sayamalo earned a new deal this offseason, while Vitae did not. The Eagles may be able to groom Matt Pryor or Jordan Mylata into his current role, but cashing in now on Vitae may be an idea if that really is the plan. Next up is Andrew Sende. Oh, and I hope that's not the last time I get to say that. If the Eagles want to move on from a veteran to make a statement, Sendejo has been wildly unpredictable. Oh, and something about recovering a compensatory pick or something like that? That's important to Howie Roseman, and if it means maybe even moving someone else to the position with a decrease in reliability, then why not? And finally, Vinny Curry, and while this would be tough for fans to stomach as a hometown kid leaving for a second time, he hasn't exactly been great this year, and Josh Sweat is really starting to come into his own. The Eagles may wish to trade off Curry for some interior help, and frankly, who can blame them? Next up, we're going to break down some likely trade partners. So if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Let's dive right in. Calling up an old flame is always a risk, but the love is still strong here. I'm talking about the New York Jets, of course, and Joe Douglas knows the Eagles are high on one player in particular, wide receiver Robbie Anderson. He was with the team when they tried to pursue him 12 months ago before being denied, which led to the Golden Tate trade. The speedster is averaging over 15 yards per reception and would open up the offense while Deshaun Jackson recovers without that pressure to come back prematurely and risk re-injuring himself. The Jets have also been shopping Pro Bowl defensive tackle Leonard Williams and he hasn't registered a sack this year but the 25 year old is the perfect player to step in and help the Eagles return to their win now ways thanks to the attention he draws from posing linemen. They may have too many chefs in the kitchen come season's end, but it's a move that would restore the rampant reputation of that front four. Next up is the Denver Broncos, and by now we all know the story. In fact, so much so that Gary Cobb actually guaranteed that a move for cornerback Chris Harris Jr. would happen. Harris and the Eagles have been linked for close to a week now, with former Broncos DB coach Corey Undlin having worked with him previously. Harris has the versatility to play both inside and outside, and has been massively productive during his time for the Broncos. The problem is, like Philly, they're battling injury. Bryce Callahan and Devontae Borsby are sidelined, leaving Isaac Yadam and CHJ as the only healthy corners. However, if they traded with Zul Douglas in exchange for his services, then that's a very different conversation. Another player to note is, of course, Vaughn Miller, who has long been one of Denver's greatest assets. It's hard to imagine him lining up in another team's colours, although Midnight Green would suit the elite talent who has 2.5 sacks on the season. Miller is versatile enough to be moved around the defense at will, but moving him out of Denver is almost impossible to imagine. Third on this list is the Atlanta Falcons, and more specifically, linebacker Vic Beasley. The Eagles need linebacker help, as we've already established, and a little birdie told me that the Falcons are aggressively shopping their 2015 first round selection. Beasley hasn't been the same since his stunning breakout in 2016, where he had a whopping 15 and a half sacks to his name, but even so, he could walk into this linebacker room and easily be the most talented there, and still have an upside high enough for the Eagles to develop long term. The Cleveland Browns come next, and they apparently have an interest in Halapulavati Vitae, and are shopping two names in particular, wide receiver Rashad Higgins and cornerback TJ Carey. Higgins has wheels but comes with some odd concerns. He's a remnant of the last regime in Cleveland and he's not seeing the field anywhere near as much as he'd hoped, but he's vocally making that displeasure known. A change of scenery could be beneficial, but injury setbacks have kept the man who recorded 39 catches for 572 yards and four touchdowns last year chained down, and that's the last thing the Eagles need. As for Carey, he's now in his sixth year and has looked relatively sharp so far. He has 27 tackles through six games and has allowed just 24 completions on 35 targets. 
The former Raider is getting a lot more exposure due to Ward and Williams being sidelined, but if they are close to returning, he could be an instant bump up over Jalen Mills, or at the very least, a nickel upgrade if Schwartz wants to keep the Green Goblin out there. The Washington Redskins and linebacker John Bostick. He's not happy in Washington, put it that way. The ever-reliable linebacker criticised the offence recently and has been one of the lone defensive standouts registering at least seven tackles in each of their last five games. He would be a huge upgrade in the middle of the field and stop the heartbreak of seeing Jordan Hicks decimate in Arizona, at least for a while. What would it take to get him? That remains unclear, but one thing that certainly is crystal is that the Redskins season is signed, sealed, delivered, and in the mailbox. It's done, there's nothing more that needs to be said, and with that in mind, they may be willing to part ways for a couple of draft picks. Next up, the Cincinnati Bengals and Geno Atkins. If it is defensive tackle help the Eagles want, then this wily vet may be among the best options available. He does carry three years worth of an $11 million plus cap hit, but the Eagles build from the ball out and they aren't afraid to invest heavily to keep it thriving. Jernigan's shot at redeeming that previous contract may have already been fired out of a silenced gun and the Eagles can't really wait around for him to try again. Atkins is one of the lone standouts on a dying Cincy team and it makes sense to prime away for one last big career push. Penultimately, the New England Patriots and mainly wide receiver Josh Gordon. I would have included Michael Bennett had he not been shipped off just one day before the making of this video, but Josh Gordon makes sense and it's such an interesting situation, especially since the troubled wide receiver has been placed on IR and then commented on an official Instagram post by the NFL looking very confused about it all. If New England want to ship him out, he's going to get a lot of interest from teams around the league, so what's the harm in throwing them a little something to ensure first dips? Finally, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Former Eagles defensive tackle Bo Allen is literally seeing around 12 snaps per game in Tampa, and in 2017, he accounted for close to 30% of defensive snaps for the Eagles. Like Curry, the weather may have been hotter, but the player's not been. Bringing Allen home in addition to another move to solidify the defensive tackle position for the foreseeable future. As for David, he's been mentioned in trade rumours for quite some time now, and he's in fine form too. Adding six tackles in Sunday's loss to Carolina, the veteran is playing a heavy snap count every week and is storming towards a third consecutive year of 100 plus tackles. And considering the Eagles just lost the linebacker of that calibre in Zach Brown, it makes a lot of sense. The difference with David, however, is his coverage. He's allowing just 57.9% of passes thrown his way to be caught, and that number has dropped significantly from last year. With a pick to his name as well, David would be the perfect pickup to lock down the middle of the field. But what do you think, guys? What trade would you pull the trigger on? Let me know down in the comments section below. Don't forget to leave a like to be in with a chance of winning a Philly Sports Network hoodie. And from myself, Liam Jenkins, you can follow me at Liam Jenkins PSN. I'll see you next time.